Hi folks, Chuck McCown here. So we're making a little video today about hard facing. And my other video is saying watch the hard facing, don't let the hard facing wear out. Okay, so you can see we use a special hard face here. I've talked about it before. It's actually got tungsten carbide grit embedded in the hard facing rod or wire we use. And it's throughout. And that stuff's just as hard as the... Uh, tungsten carbide plate that's here and the uh, the diamond is this little region on the outer edge here but but behind that is all tungsten carbide anyhow it's almost as hard as diamond but you know when it wears out in this one area that we keep talking about is so critical um, how do you how do you replace that I mean obviously a lot of the guys that are out here where I am in Utah they bring them into our shop and we hard face them and send them back out and change a few teeth it's all very inexpensive um but a lot of our customers are no longer in utah we've got a ton of customers in other places ohio pennsylvania texas california puerto rico they're just all over the place so like this one this one's worn down a lot it, it went a little bit too long so today we've got a little bit of an experiment how can you do this in the field because our rig for doing it is this contraption right here and it just it's got a, a vibratory feeder and it's got a hopper on it and it shakes that grit and it comes out down here and, the, and they're holding this when they're welding it but you guys aren't going to have that probably but we think we've got a way that you can do it yourself using other means all right, a, we're here with Ben. He's he's part of the McCown Technology family here, and right. he's going to um, he's going to do a little bit of a trial run here without the tungsten carbide because we've got three different rods here. What kind of rod you got there, Ben? A sixty thirteen. That's a normal sixty thirteen, which you would find in any farmer's workshop. Just a Hobart seventy. Just a sixty thirteen. So we're gonna we're gonna make sure the welder's set up and. Uh, and can draw a good arc with this. And then we'll also have a little bit of a bead that we can compare how hard it is, assuming we're successful in getting some tungsten carbide into it. Well, that's sounding really good. Yeah, it might be a little hot. All right, so. Now what's this next rod you got? Next one is a 7018. 7018 used in a lot of steel fabrication shops. It's uh, it's a good rod for filling. What what kind of settings are you using? Uh, 130 amps. 130 amps. So this is also a very very common mild steel rod. All right, what's the next rod you're gonna try? Next rod is a specialty hard facing rod. Okay, is this the one that's like bright blue light? It's got chromium in it, chrome in it too, I think. 130 as well. 130 amps, folks. That's sounding good too. Now, how I'm about sure this? Go is this the boron stuff back there in the back? This, or? this is the boron. Okay, so that's from that plastic box? It's from this plastic box. Um, what's this stuff? That's 6015. Oh, it's coming from plastic box too. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to try to add some grit into it. All right, so this is what the grit looks like when we get it. And it's really what it is is as far as i know is they take old like machine tools end mills and things like that that are worn out and they uh somehow they they grind that stuff up I like to see the industrial grinder that can grind carbide end mills but um they turn into a nice grit we've experimented around we like this particular weight of the grit uh it seems to be a good you can get it powdered all the way up to big hunks and chunks so what we're going to try to do here is gavin's going to be the grip machine and we're going to literally sprinkle it into the, put it in that, sprinkle it into the pool as, as we're, we're striking the arc. Now we don't know if it's going to sink to the bottom of the pool like it does with MIG welding. We're hoping that it does. If this isn't a, if this isn't a successful, 
I'm thinking about making a, a rod that actually has got the grid embedded in the in the flux. So, all right, here we go. Test number one. Yeah, get down close to the arc. Just get it right into the puddle. Almost set the. You can almost set the. Set it on there if you don't get it welded onto right. it. Strike an arc. Turn up the knob on you. Huh? Okay, let's go with the next rod. Now you see there's always some excess left over in the top, and that's good stuff. You can sweep it off and reuse it. Easy it's just brand new. More in there. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I got the hard part. Maybe. I just always know when you're using that rod up in my office, especially if it's in the evening, it just lights up the whole shot. Like you got a searchlight going back here. Oh, jeez, that's bright. And then the first thing you want to do when you're done with all of this is sweep the excess into the bucket. And you get at it too quickly, you'll uh, burn the hairs off your your brush. Oh, you want to put it in an old bucket? Oh yeah, it has a little bit of slag in it. Um, but I don't know if that'll matter for the guys out in the field. If this is successful, we don't know if this is successful. All right, so hey man, it it has a good look to it, don't you think? Yeah, it looks I like I think you got we succeeded. Well, we okay. will see if oh, if it's just embedded in the slag. Well, I suppose it's pretty easy to embed it in the slag. That one looks like it did it. When I was a kid, I was learning to weld, and I couldn't tell the difference between the slag and the steel in the puddle. <laughs> and I think I did a beautiful weld, and it was all slag. Yep. Stuck together with Last slag. thing I want to try is what lay it down ahead I want of time. To lay it down and then weld on top of it. That doesn't work out so good with wire feed, Not but with wire feed, but it might work with stick. Okay, well, good. All right, high gear, Boana. I know that carbide, if you... I'm gonna go with that ground that doesn't work. Something about getting carbide too hot for too long. I don't know if it, if it, melt, if it oxidizes the... What are they using carbide to bind it? Chromium? Them? No, it's some other metal though. Cobalt. Cobalt, okay. It'll it oxidizes the cobalt. cobalt, and the cobalt's the glue that holds yeah. the rest of the carbide together. Hmm. Definitely harder to maintain an arc. Dragon. Tink, you can hear it cracking. And that's okay with hard facing, it, uh, you almost expect it to crack. That does not mean it's going to fall off, it just means it's got a different uh, thermal expansion coefficient compared to the underlying steel. But it's still, um, I mean, yeah, hard facing, not with carbide, but they both have a different coefficient of expansion. But cracks in your hard face is, is not a problem. Okay, grab an angle grinder and just see what our results are.
Let me tell you, properly done, it's harder than hell to grind this tungsten carbide hard face. It just, it'll wear out. We use flap wheels a lot rather than hard. You got a hard, you have hard flap disc. Flap disc, those cut the best on everything. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, you, you see the color difference? And you notice the bright. I don't know if you can hear me. Ben, stop for a second. Stop. So if you notice on the on the carbon steel, um, the bright uh, yellow sparks flying off of it, then that's you know their spark test to actually determine what kind of metal you're you're into. But when he hit the two beads that have the tungsten carbide grid in them. There's a lot less sparks and they're more of a red spark. So we have actually succeeded without doubt. So let's finish up your last one there. I think where you laid it down first might have actually worked the best. Well, depending on what rod you're using. See, what you're wanting to see there is this pock mark uh, of the tungsten carbide beads. Uh, it's funny, your first your, ones. your first so, one, it's got a little pock marks. Maybe those are gas holes. Those are gas holes. So you, you're thinking the middle one is the best one? The middle one looks Boy, it's sure looks crunchy. It's like crunchy it's got, peanut butter. It's got a lot of carbide. Yeah, I would recommend that. This, that's the boron. That's the boron rod. The Let's boron get that, that title here piece. again. All right, highly recommended. Now Don't this, put the grit down first though, sprinkle it into the weld. Yeah, that's just regular 7018, and it's got Which everybody a fair amount, has. It's got a fair amount in. Even putting it down before looks like it did okay. There's a little bit of slag inclusion. Yeah. I think though that you'd want somebody to sprinkle it. Yeah, I, I really don't. 6013 looked the best. It, Look. it did wear down a little bit. This is 6013 sprinkling. They're welding through this. Uh, okay, so, but can you see actual carbide in the 6013? You can a little bit. Well, there's a couple little spots there, there, and, and, and there. I don't, I don't know. I think I'd go with the boron, don't you? If you can get it. If you can get it. Well, I think they can get it. I mean, we got it. Yeah. This, I don't know where we got it. This is order off, off of eBay. This 78. Is there any marks on that container this is over the there? The only thing, the QC mark. Okay, well, let's hopefully you guys can find that. But um, as Second. you can see, with just farmer rod, structural steel rod, almost anything's going to work. Yep. Uh, Second best 7018 did a really good job. Yeah, but you could clearly see in the video, I'm sure. I haven't seen it yet because I'm still taking it. But you could clearly see the difference in the sparks. There's a lot fewer sparks. They're dark red. And uh, so there you go. There you have it. Now you guys can maintain your blades in the field you're going to have to pull them off the machine you're going to have to uh, lay them down horizontally to say hey guys hey hey <laughs> these are some of the crew here that make these wonderful blades for all y'all and now you make them last even longer so half the price and they last three times is the dealer blades that's what a new customer just told me this morning so happy to be your blade manufacturer